and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you live from beautiful Hungary. I hope everybody is having a healthy, safe and productive week so far. Uh, good to see many students in the class. Hi Anish, hi Masa, hi Ankit, Islam for all, Saki Bose, Shirojidin. Nice to see our members, Michael Fan, regular students, Flower Sun. Welcome everyone. This uh, class is an IELTS listening section focusing on part one and two practice. This lesson is presented by aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Do visit us there. And for general IELTS, check us out at gieltshelp.com. On both of our websites, we have lots and lots of materials for you, including original practice exams, fully interactive courses. We have help for your speaking and writing as well. There's a live uh, speaking practice with other students that's absolutely free. Our academic website looks like this with the blue background. We'll use this in just a moment for the listening audio. Click that big red button to join us there for the general outs. It's the green background. Click that big red button to join us there. Hi, Shaima Al Khalidi. Thank you for sending those pretty flowers. I appreciate it. Students, uh, if you have questions, let me know what's on your mind. Send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com. Again, you can get our books from Amazon uh, as well, the exam books. You can search for A Helps Academic IELTS and G Helps General IELTS. Today, we shall do this listening part one and two. Uh, tomorrow, we will start a task two with members. And of course, we'll finish listening parts three and four tomorrow. So try to be in both today's and tomorrow's class so you can get the full listening section. Now, students, we will start with listening section part one. This is coming out of our first exam in test book number one. Uh, students, a couple of changes. Uh, I know IELTS uh, is on hold in a lot of places because of the uh, coronavirus, but uh, from what I hear, uh, the IELTS exams will start back in most places around the world in June. That's the plan. Uh, so beginning of June, and they're going to have a lot of makeup exams as well. A uh, couple of important points for the listening section. Here, uh, when we developed this exam book, there was an example at the beginning of the listening section. You don't have that example anymore. So we're going to remove those from our exam. So don't expect that. Okay. Uh, also, they're not going to refer to page numbers, just question numbers. And uh, they're not going to call them section one, section two, but they're going to call them part one, part two for clarity. Not big changes, but just be aware of these, okay? All right, everyone. So uh, get your headsets ready. Hopefully you have a headset. If not, that's okay. Make sure your volume is up. Volume is definitely up on my side. Uh, so we're going to hop over to our website here, the academic, uh, log into our student account. And then in your student account, you have loads of fantastic materials, including computer-based exams, paper exams, videos, over 100 hours of HD video lessons, and these audio CDs. That's what I'm looking for. And in the audio CDs, this is going to be uh, listening uh, CD one, track one. Um, students, uh, don't uh, write your answers into the chat, okay? Uh, write it on a separate piece of paper. Give everybody a fair chance to answer the questions on their own, okay? So um, we'll go over the answers together after, all right? So here we go, students, with the listening uh, section. I hope everybody is ready. This recording is copyrighted by Two Think One Solutions Inc. and World ESL Tutors. You will hear several different recordings and you will answer questions on what you hear. There will be time given to read the instructions and questions. 
and you will be given a chance to check your work. The recordings will be played only once. The test is made up of four sections. At the end of the test, you will have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. Now turn to section one. Listening section one. You will hear a conversation between two men as one of the men registers for a football league. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. You will see that there is an example. This time only, the conversation relating to this question will be played. Hello there. I'd like to register for the Autumn Men's Football League. All right. Uh, in what town will you be playing? I'd like to play in Chester, but I'd be willing to travel to Liverpool if I had to. The man says he wants to play in Chester, so B has been indicated for you. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to five. Hello there. I'd like to register for the Autumn Men's Football League. All right. Uh, in what town will you be playing? I'd like to play in Chester, but I'd be willing to travel to Liverpool if I had to. Well, we have two spots left open on the team in Chester and five spots open on the team in Liverpool there's a very good chance you would have to try out for the team in Chester. Are you a good player? I consider myself a good player, yes. I have been to a number of the Autumn Men's League games in the past, just as a spectator, and I'm sure I would have no trouble fitting in. OK, good. So we will register you for Chester then. I just need to get some information from you, starting with your position. Where on the field do you prefer to play? I'm a midfielder, although really, I can play anywhere aside from goalkeeper. Oh, I forgot to ask your name. Right, I guess that's important. My name is Steve Tremell. Would you mind spelling Tremell for me? Certainly. Tremell is spelled T-R-A-M-M-E-L-L. -L. Right, now I need your home address, including your postcode. I live in Chester, of course, at 452 King George Avenue. The postcode is MS868P4. MS868P4? Yes, that's right. And your date of birth, sir? The 8th of September, 1986. OK. Now I need your phone number. Just a mobile number will do. I don't have a mobile phone right now, unfortunately. I can give you my girlfriend's number instead. That would be all right, I suppose. Good. Her number is 329-63-3270. Fine. I think that's all the information I need to gather from you. Do you have any questions? Yes, I do have a couple. First, when does the season start? The season starts on the 28th of September, although your first game is later, I think. Let me check the schedule. Yes, your first game is October the 1st in Liverpool. Let me make a copy of the schedule for you. Thank you. Could you also tell me how long each game is? Each game has two halves, 40 minutes each half, so the game is 80 minutes long. That's a little shorter than the other leagues I've played in. Games are usually 90 minutes. Yes, our spring and summer leagues are 90 minute games, but our autumn league has only 80 minute games. I think it has something to do with the poor weather. You now have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen to the rest of the interview and answer questions 6 to 10. OK, can you tell me how many players are on each team? And I mean on the whole team, not just the players on the pitch. Usually there are five additional players to the 11 on the pitch. So there are 16 players on each roster. We generally find that to be the perfect number. It allows for a few players to miss a game 
but still allows lots of playing time for each player. Yes, playing time is what I was worried about. I don't want to pay my money and then sit on the sidelines the whole season. Are there minimum playing time requirements? Yes, each player must play a minimum of half a game, so you are guaranteed at least 40 minutes of playing time per game. Wonderful, that puts my mind at ease. Could you tell me what facility we play at in Chester? That information is on the schedule, along with the addresses of all the other facilities in the league. Here's your schedule. Thank you. Oh good, it states we play two streets from my flat. How convenient. That is very lucky. Do you have any more questions? No, I think that's it. Oh wait, how much does it cost to register? Uh, it's going to be £125 for the season, including all fees. How would you like to pay? I'll be paying cash. Right. Would you like a receipt? Um, if you find that it doesn't work out time-wise, you can always bring the receipt back and we will give you some... That is the end of section one. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. And always check your answers, students, in that half minute to make sure that you didn't make any silly, simple mistakes or mess up question numbers. Okay, let's go through the answers first and then we'll talk a little bit of strategy. So again, it's a tiny bit easier than the real exam in this case because you have the example, so you have a little bit of extra time. Of course, the example was where would the man like to play football? And the answer was uh, Chester. Now, uh, let's go through the questions one to 10, and then we'll discuss each one in a little bit more detail, where I will give you some strategies as well to help. Uh, number one, how many football matches has the man played in the league? 10, 0, 40, or 50, A, B, or C? Nazir says, I think the answer is B. Uh, Joginder Kaur agrees. And um, yeah, he says zero. So. It's in this league, right? League means this group of teams. So the correct answer there was B. All right, um, use the capital letter B in your answer sheet. Okay, number two, uh, what position does the man play? That's right, Erkin, he was a spectator. Uh, what position does the man play? Uh, a, midfield, B, goalkeeper, or C, striker? He says it very clearly. Uh, he says, okay, I'm, uh, although I can play anything else aside from goalkeep. So really, he could be a striker or a midfielder, but he does say he's a midfielder. So he says, I'm a midfielder, although I could play any position aside from goalkeep. So the best answer, because in the IELTS, you have to give always the best answer. The best answer is A. Okay, so B and A. He said, aside from goalkeeper, which means that he does not play goalkeeper. Okay, he says, I'm a midfielder. All right, uh, let's keep going. So this is a very typical listening part one type of questions where you have to take some information about name, address, birthday, postal code, and so on. So what is the name of this person? His first name is Stephen, and what's his family name? His family name, Pooja says, is Tramel. Elena says Tramer. Uh, Tramel is correct. Uh, T-R-A, and he spells it. He spells it, so he says T-R-A-M-M-E-L-L. Okay, so T -R -A -M -M -E -L -L. Double L, all capital, okay. All lowercase letter, not okay. The first letter has to be capital. Okay, the address is 452 Kings George Avenue. That's where he lives. And then the man asks for his postcode and this is repeated. So what is his postcode? He gives this postcode and the man says it back. Usually for postcodes, they do this in the aisles, okay? So it's MS868P4, very good. MS868P4. 
Uh, you don't need to worry about the spacing. It doesn't matter. I do recommend writing capital letters, not small letters, but capital letters for this in your answer sheet. So it's MS868P4. Okay, that's the correct answer. So Tramel, MS868P4. Be careful listening for the difference between the letter M and N. Okay, so M and N. All right, uh, now here you had to do again a little bit of a multiple choice. It's matching the time with the correct event. The event is Stephen's first match. Uh, when is it? The 30th of September, 28th, 3rd of October, or the 1st of October, A, B, C, or D? Yeah, very good, it's D. Bonus question, when does the season start? A, B, C, or D? So when does the actual season start? The man says, yes, uh, the season starts on this day, but your first match is a little bit later. It's on October 1st. When does the season start? A, B, C, or D? Anybody catch that one? For the bonus question? Charlie says it's B. The season starts on the 28th of September. Uh, that is correct. Yeah, so good for those of you who got that. Um, that's active listening. So always challenge yourself, especially in part one and two. Students, it's really good practice to challenge yourself, especially for part one and two, to hear even more information. And when you're studying IELTS in a classroom or together, then uh, ask each other questions beyond the questions on the sheet. Did everybody catch that? Yeah, thumbs up. So if you're learning IELTS with partners or together, do the listening, sure, answer the questions on the sheet, and then challenge each other to see if you can catch more information. You can even kind of make a game of it to see who's better, okay? That makes sense? So just like what I asked you, when does the season start? Okay, all right. Here we go. Uh, then you had a table to complete. Okay, now be always really careful with the uh, instructions. No more than two words. When you see this, it's a good chance that at least one answer will be two words. Thank you, Rangana, for answering that. Okay, um, the league, it's an autumn league. The game length, 80 minutes. Um, and the players on the roster, how many players on the roster? 16, very good. Okay. And what's the minimum playing time? What's the minimum playing time? So for this, all you need is the number, 16. That's good. For number seven, it's a little bit more tricky. Uh, what's the minimum playing time for each player? Yeah, it's 40 minutes. Exactly. So here, you needed two. Huang Le Nguyen, careful with it. Elena Gehan, be really careful here. You needed 40, what? 40 minutes, okay? You can use the abbreviation. It doesn't have to be capital, but you need both words. If you only write 40, 40 what? 40 hours, 40 seconds. It'd be a really long game, 40 hours. Um, so you needed 40. If you do the abbreviation, it has to be 40 min z like that, okay? You still need the S because it's plural. If you write 40 min, so students who are writing 40 min, uh, you might get that wrong, okay? There's a very, very good chance that they're gonna mark that wrong because you need that S, okay? For abbreviations, when it's a, an abbreviation of a plural, make sure to add that S. Uh, Michael Fenn, you can't say half of the game because it's two words, no more than two words. So if you write half of the game, uh, although it seems correct, it's four words, Michael Fan, so you'll get it wrong, okay? So it's gotta be 40 mins or 40 minutes. Be really careful with instructions and be careful with what information is given and not given in the question. Uh, bonus question, another bonus, bonus question time, students, bonus question time. Um, usually football matches are 90 minutes. Why are these matches 80 minutes? Why are they 10 minutes shorter than the usual? This is the kind of fun bonus questions you can ask each other. See who catches 
this information or visualizes this information. Yeah, very good. I think that's what you meant, Boomi, as well. And Charlie, due to bad weather. Yeah, because it's in the autumn. Autumn is in the fall season, right? It's rainier usually in England, especially. So it's something to do with the bad weather is what they think. Yeah, okay. That's why they're usually shorter games. Okay, good, good. Yeah, some of you are really paying attention. Fantastic. All right. Visualize and go beyond what's being asked. Okay, great. I'm liking it. All right, question number eight. Choose the correct letter again. Multiple choice. Why does the man say that he's lucky? A, he's able to find a team to play on. B, there's a minimum playing time requirement. Or C, the playing field is close to where he lives. Shiro Jidin says, I think that's C. They talk something about it's, yeah, close to where he lives. C is correct. Another bonus question, how far? Quantitative language, right? Anybody catch that? So if this is where the man lives, this is his apartment building. Where's the actual, uh, where's the actual field? How far is it? Yeah, very good. A lot of you got it. It's two blocks, two blocks. Streets, uh, almost. Two blocks is more accurate. It's two blocks from my house. Good for you. All right, for those of you that got two blocks. Usually two blocks is the same as two streets, but sometimes it can actually be just one street and two blocks of large buildings. Okay, so yeah, it's kind of a confusing one, but Two blocks and two streets isn't necessarily always the same. Careful. Okay, um, here we go. Number nine, number 10. No more than two words for each answer. Uh, what is the cost of the football league? How much is it? Of course, it's not free. Administration, setting it all up. They probably got some jerseys. There's probably somebody organizing it. 125 pounds. That's right. There's no indication of the money here or the currency, so you should indicate 125 pounds. Students use the symbol. It's easier okay, than writing the word. It's faster. Make sure you include it right away so that you remember to put that into your answer sheet. Okay. And now, if you don't have the symbol, especially in the computer-based exam, then, of course, you're going to have to write pounds but please do one or the other, but not both, okay? All right. Okay, uh, question number 10. How does the man pay for the registration fee? Hopefully you caught that. It was fairly simple. How does he pay cash it is? He's paying cash, absolutely. Good job. Nicely done, students. All right, uh, students, how much? Uh, how many did you get correct out of 10? What was your raw score there? So what did you get out of 10? How did you fare? What did you get out of 10 for part one in this? Okay. Izatilo says 10 out of 10, nicely done. Ranveer, 10, good. Navneet, 8, not bad. Charlie, 10. Nikita, 9. Doing good. All right, and that's what you should get, students, okay? So uh, here is a little tip, a couple of points for listening section one, okay? Um, so, or I should say listening part one. I'm going to give you a few tips here, okay? So listening part one, tip one, uh, you should... You must aim to get eight from 10 or more correct as the next parts will be much more difficult, okay? So you need to get that at least, okay? Tip number two for part one, do not rush. Often the answers are given twice. 
Okay, so be patient and follow the audio. All right. Now, a little bit of multiple choice question strategy. Uh, make sure to paraphrase keywords and change questions to statements. Okay, show you what I mean by that. So we had quite a few multiple choice questions here. I think we had five or six altogether. So here it says, how many football matches has the man played in the league? And then uh, we see this word match coming up several times. Now we're talking about football and we're talking about football matches. Uh, so as soon as you see this word match, you should definitely be thinking, okay, uh, what's another way to say that? How do we hear this word in the audio? What's the word used by the uh, speakers in many cases instead of the word match? Okay. Charlie Sen says game. That's right. Okay. Uh, so absolutely game. Game, okay? Now, you see that this is a question. How many football matches has the man played in the league? You need to change this, okay, into a statement. So, for example, I have played in X number of games, okay? Now he's even more fancy. He says, I've actually never played in any of these games. I've just watched them as a spectator. Okay, only as a spectator. All right. Uh, what position does the man play? I can play in any position, okay, or location on the field. So change the multiple choice questions to statements, okay? Because you're not going to hear a question uh, you're, as the answer. So you need to listen for the sentence. Is that clear? So listen for the sentences. Practice changing questions into statements and practice paraphrasing key words that appear over and over again in the topic of the audio, okay? It's really important. Ranveer says, yeah, that makes sense, which is good. All right. Um, yeah, role, Boomi, for position would be a nice paraphrase as well. Practice that paraphrasing. Absolutely. Okay, students, sounds like, you know, you have the right idea here. Again, in part one, they will often repeat names and spellings, so be patient, okay? And when the multiple choice questions, the answers turn into sentences like this, it becomes even more difficult. So make sure that you're not just stuck staring at the choices, but you're listening for the answer. I feel lucky because, oh, I'm so lucky that. Okay, so listen for the answer. Don't stare at the choices. Okay, so... Do not just stare at multiple choice uh, options, but rather listen for the answer. This is especially true when the choices are sentences, okay? And when it's a few numbers, it's okay, but when they're long sentences, that becomes much more difficult especially in parts two, three, and four. All right, everyone. So uh, without further ado, let's uh, take a crack at part two. Again, you're not going to see section two. You're going to see part two. So um, again, my audio is maxed out. Turn up the volume. If it's quiet for you, use a headset if you have the chance. And uh, don't put your students, do not put your answers into the chat. We will go through the answers like this one after. Be nice to everybody else. If you put wrong answers into the chat, it will just confuse your peers. So don't do that, okay? Focus on the audio, write down your answers, and then we'll share them after. Everybody's good? Yeah? Awesome. 
Okay, so here we go, everyone, with part two. Again, this audio is coming from our website, aehelp.com. Here we go. To section two. Take some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Listening section two. You will hear a radio presenter interviewing a woman about the infamous ship Titanic. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Now listen carefully to the interview and answer questions 11 to 16. Good afternoon to all our listeners and welcome back to History Now, a weekly programme that reflects on subjects of historical influence. Today we are going to speak with Dr Andrea Smithson, an historian at the University of Glasgow. Good afternoon, Andrea. Good afternoon, Peter. What are you going to talk about today, Andrea? I'll be talking about one of the most catastrophic events in maritime history the sinking of the Titanic. I can't wait for you to begin. Thanks, Peter. The Titanic was an enormous ship. The makers called it unsinkable. From end to end, it measured approximately the length of three football pitches. It had the capacity to carry over 3,500 passengers, as well as the over 800 people on the crew of the ship. Despite its massive size and impressive capacity, the Titanic was able to cruise at a speed of 40 knots. This was in large part due to the 59,000 horsepower engine. Just how much is 59,000 HP? Well, in literal terms, it's like being pulled by 59,000 horses. More realistically, it's the equivalent power of 500 cars. On the maiden voyage that left Southampton, England, on the 10th of April 1912, there were 1,343 passengers and 885 crew members. There were three different classes of tickets for those aboard the Titanic. A third class ticket was the lowest level ticket. At the time, it cost between three and eight pounds. A second class ticket cost about 12 pounds. A first class ticket cost anywhere from 30 pounds all the way up to 870 pounds. In today's money, 870 pounds is over 20,000 pounds. You may be wondering what the people in the first class were paying for. They had luxurious rooms on the highest decks, delicious meals for breakfast, lunch and dinner, as well as the finest entertainment money could buy. On the other hand, those in third class slept in cramped rooms which were quite plain and small and did not have access to the fine restaurants and entertainment on the upper decks of the ship. Now I'd like to tell you about a few lesser known facts about the Titanic. Although there were four large funnels or smokestacks on the Titanic, Only three of them were functional. One of the funnels was put there just to make the ship look even bigger and more impressive. The ship carried over 70 tonnes of food for the passengers, including over 40,000 eggs. You now have some time to look at questions 17 to 20. Now listen to the rest of the interview and answer questions 17 to 20. On the night of the 14th of April 1912, on her maiden voyage, the Titanic hit an iceberg. About three hours later, early morning the next day, the ship sank. The reasons for the sinking are numerous. First, the watertight doors, which were supposed to keep water out, didn't work properly. Second, The night of the 14th of April was incredibly calm on the water. Icebergs are easily spotted when there are waves crashing against them. On this night, there were no waves. The strength of the metal in the Titanic was not as it should have been. The metal became brittle in the freezing cold and was easily broken by the iceberg. Another big factor 
was the inability of the Titanic to turn quickly. Once the lookouts had spotted the iceberg, the captain ordered the ship turned, but it was too late. If the ship had been able to turn faster, it would have missed the iceberg. One of the biggest tragedies about the sinking was that there were not enough lifeboats for everyone on the ship. In addition to this, many of the lifeboats left the sinking vessel with less than half of the people they were designed to carry. For example, the first lifeboat off the Titanic left with only 27 of the allotted 65 passengers. This unfortunate occurrence can be attributed to panic on the part of the passengers and crew. One can only imagine the sheer terror on board the ship that early morning. 1,523 out of the 2,228 passengers and crew perished that morning. Most died from the near freezing temperature of the Atlantic Ocean. Others drowned after being trapped in the lower decks. 705 people lived to tell their story, most of them women and children, who were put on the lifeboats before the grown men were. Because of this, 94% of the first-class passenger women and children were saved, while only 14% of the third-class passenger men survived. Overall, 60% of the first-class occupants survived, while only 25% of the third-class ticket holders lived in the aftermath of this tragedy. That is the end of section two. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. And again, students, in that half minute, check your answers. Don't be looking at the next section. I'm just going to stop the audio on the website. And uh, we'll go back and do this together from question 11. All right, students. So uh, let's go back to question 11. What was the overall capacity of the Titanic? Meaning how many people was the Titanic able to carry all together? Was it A, 800, B, 3,500, or C, 4,300? Very good for all of you answering C. Yeah, the correct answer is C. Uh, it was 800 crew and 3,500 passengers, which equals 4,300 overall capacity. Overall means total. Okay. Uh, the IELTS, sometimes you have to do some simple math. Okay. IELTS is more than just recognizing words and catching sentences. You have to do a bit of thinking. So C was the correct answer there. All right. Um, what was the cost of a third class ticket? 30 to 870 pounds, one to two pounds, three to eight, eight pounds, A, B, or C? What was it? Yeah, it was C again. So here it's C and C again, three to eight pounds. Uh, 30 to 870, that was first class tickets, obviously, uh, first class. It's very expensive for a third class ticket. So C and C. Now, uh, questions 13 to 15, this was a multiple multi-choice question. Uh, notice how I gave you more time to review this. So that's my first tip is spend more time reviewing this type of question, especially because it's worth three marks. So when a question's worth three marks, pay more attention to it, okay? Mahnoush says, I love those three choice questions. Yeah, we sure all do. Uh, the order doesn't matter. So what were the benefits of a first class ticket? Uh, B, luxurious rooms, that makes sense, of course, okay? Uh, C, great entertainment, yeah. If you're going to be paying that much money, you're probably going to have some musicians and some great entertainment. Okay. And the last one was D, high quality meals. So, of course, they're going to serve better food for people uh, paying more uh, money. Okay. So, B, C, and D were the correct answers. The order doesn't matter. You just have to get them correct. All right. Now this was a kind of matching the picture. Okay. Which of the following is the best 
representation of the Titanic. Uh, we have A, where the, there you have five smokestacks. B, you have one, two, three, four smokestacks. Or C, where you have three smokestacks. Yeah, the correct one was B. Um, bonus question. Uh, one of the four smokestacks didn't actually work. So why did they add it? So maybe uh, this uh, first one here, it's not really working, but it's still there. Why did they add it? Why put in the smokestack that's not working? What was the crazy logic for that? So there were four funnels, but one was not actually functional. Why was it there? <laughs> Charlie Sen says, yeah, to make the ship look big. Uh, to make it look bigger, impress the passengers. Absolutely. Uh, instead of the smokestack, what should have they put there? Double bonus. So double bonus. Instead of this, by listening carefully to the audio, double bonus time. And this is the kind of game that you can play when you're studying active listening. Double bonus time. Um, what should have the engineers put there? instead of that smokestack. Rahim says, extra lifeboats. Yeah, I agree, Rahim. I wonder if anybody else got that, putting in extra lifeboats. Yeah, there weren't enough lifeboats for all the passengers, so they should have put extra lifeboats in there instead of that giant smokestack that served no purpose at all. I guess people thought a little bit differently back then than they do today, maybe, maybe not. Okay. Yeah, that's right, Shaima. People were a bit more eccentric back then in some ways than today. In some ways, maybe not. All right, uh, here we had a flow chart. Um, we had to uh, fill these in, so it was an extremely calm night. There were no something that crashed against the iceberg. What's the answer there? Charlie Sen says waves. That's right, waves. Uh, students, waves are countable. So you need the S. It's not just wave, it's waves. Uh, weird that waves are countable because there's so many of them. It doesn't really make sense. But yeah, I guess you can count like one wave, two wave, three waves, four waves, five waves. So waves. All right. Uh, number 18, the watertight something failed. So the Titanic hit the iceberg. There were no waves. It hit the iceberg. The watertight something failed. Um, the watertight doors. Again, it's a plural. Uh, students, plurals matter. Okay, so Rahim, Mirzada, if you write door instead of doors, you will lose the mark. Okay, uh, many something left the ship half full based on my previous questions. You'll probably get that. So number 19, it's one word, just one word. Uh, Kartik, correct, Puja, correct. Uh, students, uh, remember this. It's good to know. Lifeboats, one word. Okay, it's kind of a tricky one. Mm, I don't think, well, they might give it to you if you write two words, but uh, in fact, it's one word here, lifeboats. And it's many, so it has to be plural. Pay attention to many. 1,523 people die. That's a lot of people. Most from the freezing cold temperatures of the what? What was really cold? that people died from. Yeah, the Atlantic Ocean. Let's see who knows about the uh, history of the Titanic in more detail. Uh, what was the country that they were in? So where were they close to? Which country were they beside? So which country's ocean did they sink in? Anybody know that? Nope, not England, not America, 
not the U.S. They went from the U.K. Canada. They were near the province of uh, Newfoundland. Definitely not Brazil, Shirojiri. The water's pretty warm there. Okay, so they were next to Canada. Canada. That's why it was so cold. They were near Newfoundland. Newfoundland. They were going to New York. So the Titanic was sailing from London to New York, and they were going across the Atlantic towards Newfoundland and then a little bit south to uh, New York because, of course, New York is just south of the Canadian border. Um, all right, students, uh, what did you get out of 20? So what did you get on that section there? How was your score for both uh, part one and two? What did you get out of uh, 20 there? Ranveer, 9 out of 10 on that, 8 out of 10. Shiro Jidin, 20 out of 20. Charlie Sen, nicely done. Uh, students, between part one and two, so try to keep this in mind. So here's another tip for today. Okay, so between part one and two, uh, your total score ideally is uh, 16 or more. So you can get a high band score in the listening. Okay, uh, definitely students lose more uh, in parts three and four, okay? So if you lose four or five in part one and two, those students usually lose 10 uh, out of 20 on parts three and four. So be careful with that, okay? So you don't want to lose more than four, maximum five. It's really stretching it for part one and two, okay? So uh, pay attention to that. If you're losing more than four or five there, then you definitely need to uh, be more careful, okay? All right. Uh, total, there are 40 questions. Molo Dej. Molo Dej Desvi is asking, how many questions are there in the listening? There's 10 in each part. There's four parts, so it's 40 total, okay? All right. Uh, students, uh, again, remember to get all of our practice exams, strategies, HD videos, course this is a live class so you're not getting HD uh, we're not there yet in the world of internet but um, to get our HD videos uh, with no advertising and all of our structured material for academic IELTS aehelp.com join our premium package there gltshelp.com for general tomorrow I will be back with this same listening exam to finish part three and part four so if you want to Finish this full listening exam. Come back tomorrow at the same time for parts three and four. If you can't wait, join the premium package and check it out there with all the other exams. Much love to all of you. Take care. Work hard. Study hard. Stay safe. Wash your hands. Love you lots. Bye from Budapest.